Ed Rich. Uh, just talk about what uh, Frank, your conversations with Frank about the red zone. It, it hasn't really been bad, but in Cuse, it was, it, was, uh, it could have cost you the game. Yeah, Rich, it hasn't been good enough. Um, I agree with that question. Um, we, we seemed like we had great field position yesterday. I thought the special teams did a nice job just watching the tape. We started, we started in great position. We crossed the 50 a bunch, crossed the 40 a bunch, the 30 a bunch, the 20 enough. Um, it's got to get better. I mean, we've got to execute at a higher level. We need to coach it better. We have to score touchdowns. Um, and clearly, we're, we're not doing that well enough right now. So um, both coaching and playing, it, it needs to be better. There, there, there were guys open. Um, and then there are certain plays you like back. Um, if you watch the tape, you see it. We had a guy wide open at the end of the game. Uh, Zay and Travis were, were both open on the second down when we were on the goal line. Um, it's the same play I think we scored on against Missouri, and no one covered either of them. Um, and then there's some play calls you'd like back. Um, but we, ha we have to finish. You know, yesterday I felt like we were, I felt like we were really close a couple times. We just didn't finish. Um, so clearly, Rich, we, we need to do a better job on that. Hey, Jason, sorry. That's okay. I, I'll answer both. So whoever goes first is fine. Trevor, go ahead. Okay, Trevor. All right. Uh, just what have you seen out of uh, Bryce Steele so far this year? He played pretty well yesterday. Yeah. Bryce did play well yesterday. Um, I was really proud of him. He played hard. He played violent. Uh, he played the most snaps he's played all year. He tackled really well. When he tackles, he kind of engulfs people. He's got really long arms. Um, that was a really, really encouraging, that was a really encouraging deal to watch him play on tape. I didn't notice it as much when I watched live yesterday, cause I don't just zero in on a player, but you, you clearly did, or did you watch the tape? Uh, he, he jumped off the tape. Uh, so I was really proud of him. He, he's going to be a really, he's going to be a really good player. We'll go to Kevin. Thanks Jason. Coach, how you doing? Um, I'm doing all right, Kev. How are you, man? I'm good. Um, so red bandana game this Friday, obviously timing wise, is it nice to have, you know, that kind of game to focus on with everything that's kind of going around right now, just in terms of the guys, you know, having something else to look at just in terms, instead of again, what's going on. You know, I didn't think about that. Um, I just finished team meeting, kind of gave the guys my thoughts and um, I think, I think I'd have to ask the players, you know, Ask them how they feel about it. I, I haven't even put much thought to it. I'm honored to coach in the game, and I know it will be meaningful for the players. And I take a lot of pride in that. Um, you guys know that. Um, but that's a that's a question you know we'll have to ask the players this week. I'm sure that it will build up, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of pride in that, and a lot of excitement in that, um, and paying tribute to Wells, which which we talk about a lot around here, and everything that he did. So my guess would be yes, they'll be excited. And they'll uh, they'll do everything they can to win the game. We'll go to Andy. Yeah, having watched the tape back, what's your assessment of the two QB set you guys rolled out, and is that something you're comfortable rolling with next week? Um, I'll give you my assessment on the quarterback, uh, the new quarterback, if you want to start there. Um, you know, I thought Emmett did a pretty good job coming in. I think. Emmett has not played football since his junior year in high school. Emmett has not been tackled by another person since his junior year in high school. The first time he was tackled was when he took that one hit. So for him to stand in the pocket and sit in there and make some of those throws. Um, now I think he, he could look back and try to get his feet set a little bit more. He got a little jittery a few times, but he stepped up and he, the first completion he had, I think went for 40 or 40 or more yards. Right. Um, then he threw the one hole shot late in the game. He threw another hole shot where he threw a laser beam. He connected to some receivers on some quick game. He, he did a nice job of scrambling and, and, and uh, getting us some yardage. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect, Andy, because he has not pl he's played in like 14 games in his whole life. So I didn't know how that would go, but I thought he did a good job coming in on the third series. Um, I thought he gave us some juice. He moved the ball down. I wish we could have executed better. Um, he knows there's some throws he left out there. He sent me a text late last night, so I know it's important to him. I think he'll continue to get better um, with the more reps that he gets because he hadn't really gotten a lot of reps until last week. We started ramping him up the week before a little bit more. 
Um, but I think he's got a bright future. And um, I'm proud of the way he went in and competed. So as for the two quarterbacks, do I necessarily like playing two quarterbacks? No, I'd be lying to you if I told you. I never, I'm not a big fan of rotating quarterbacks unless you have one that runs and one that throws. Um, you know, we watched the film hard this morning. You know, Frank and I will probably talk later today after we're done, or after we're done here, and, and we'll make a decision on what we think is best moving forward. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of having two guys go in and out. I'd like to get a guy in the groove and play and let him, let him get into the game, you know? That's just me being honest with you. We'll go to Emma. Jeff, sort of building off of that, um, because he is a true freshman and he's got so much time left here, how do you see him factoring in the rest of the season and going forward in the future? Emmett, I mean, sorry. Give me some more details on what you're looking for. Um, you know, how do you see him playing a role for the rest of the season? Do you see him, do you see him, you know, playing games in a more, you know, as a starter at all or or this year or as the, you know, as his career goes on? Or is he all going to be in this backup role? I think Emmett's going to have a great career here if he continues to get better. Um, he's enormous. He, can, he, he throws the ball for a freshman as good as anyone I've seen in a while at that age. It wasn't too big for him. He's very athletic. He's going to get bigger and stronger. I mean, you got, he, he's, he's big and he's strong and he's powerful and he can run. Um, so I'm very, very excited about his future. Very excited for the immediate future. Um, again, I just, I think I, I just, I need to talk to Frank and the staff and, and see what direction we want to go heading into this game on a short week. Um, but we got to make the decision fast because we're playing Friday. So I hope that answers your question. Go back to Rich. Hey coach, uh, you know, Marcus Valdez, I mean, he's hired for that job to be a disruptor. We, we saw that, that big play against Syracuse, uh, is he starting to get into his groove and 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 get more into that disruptor's role? I hope so. I think we had three sacks yesterday, which which we've been in need of. Uh, you know, Marcus has been banged up a little bit. Um, you see, he's wearing like the bionic arm that um, that big brace on his arm. He's got his hand casted up, so I know he's been playing through a lot of pain. Um, shoot, it even might look like he was wearing a knee brace in the game, too. I mean, that guy's got so much gear on his body. I think he's one of the toughest kids on the team. I think he gives great effort. Um, I think he did a really good job against the run yesterday. I thought our D-line played really well yesterday. I mean, if you look at that offense, they're scoring 38 against Wake, 30-something plus against Virginia Tech, 30-something against Florida State, maybe even in the 40s. Um, I think our we gave up two touchdowns on defense. Um, and then obviously the punt return, but I think the D line had a lot to do with that rich, um, against a team that's going to run the ball like that with a quarterback and running back, you have to be very disciplined in your movement and in your gaps. And I think Marcus was a huge part of that. And he played a lot yesterday. Go to Dan. Coach, uh, you, you mentioned something about the film earlier in the week with with true freshmen, but I guess my question is more towards guys like Bryce, guys like Emmett. What do they have to show you to prove that they can get out on the field in terms of of what they show you in practice during reps, or and and with guys who hadn't played really last year either? Um, how unique is it for them to have to step in in those roles where their senior year either didn't happen or happened in a limited role? Yeah, I think you. There's two ways you look at it when you watch tape. Um, if a guy's practicing really well and he's executing the plan and he's not making mistakes and he's a young guy and he keeps doing that week after week and he's making plays in practice and you trust him that if he goes in the game, he's going to be able to execute the plan at a high level, then I think those guys deserve to play. I think Sean Asbury was a good example of that uh, when we put him in. Um, there's been some other guys um, like Bryce, but then there's other times when you get injured and you have to – put the guy in regardless right Dan so we're a little banged up so some guys are kind of thrown into the fire even if they may not be ready and then some guys are earning the opportunity to play um that's why you always got to be ready when it is your moment and that's why I try to tell all these guys you just I mean that's life I mean there's going to be a time when when your number's called 
and you're either going to be ready or you're not. And that's going to be how you prepare. It's going to be how you pay attention. And that's not just a lesson that I'm teaching these guys in football. I mean, that's going to be down the road and whatever they do. Um, and, and I think Bryce is an example of that. And I, I'm really, really encouraged by the way he played yesterday. And there's other guys like that too. Um, some of the younger guys that are starting to play, you know, JT played yesterday and CJ Burton played yesterday. Uh, when you lose Sebastian and then you don't have a, you know, um, and you don't have a, you know, some guys who have a lot of playing experience, they got to go in and play. Good, Andy. Jeff, uh, only four sacks allowed in the first four games, but 15 in the last four. Um, in terms of pass protection, I know there's a lot of factors that go into that. There's teams are throwing pressure at you. You've been missing Tyler a bit. Um, do any changes need to be made up front, or are you comfortable with the guys you have there? I think changes need to be made. Um, now, is that people or is that scheme? But changes have to be made. It's too many sacks, Andy. I mean, you're right. We can't get sacked that many times, and we can't get pressured that many times. Now, is it six-man versus five-man protection? Should it be seven-man protection? Do we need to chip more? Um, do we need to get the ball out quicker and have more five-man stuff? Do we need to? There's a lot of things we need to do. And then, then who who are the guys? And do they give us the best chance to win? Uh, I think it's got to be a combination of coaching and playing. And I think that is 100% the truth. And it has to get better, both scheme and playing. Um, we're giving up too many sacks. Kevin. And, and the, other, the, other, the other thing, Andy, because you got me thinking a little bit, you know, we're going down. So then we're, we're becoming one dimensional where we have to throw the ball and that's not helping. Right. Um, last year when we're moving the ball and scoring, you kind of keep teams off balance, run pass, pass, run. Uh, you can't become one dimensional because if, you know, if we, if we were able to score and go, go up in that game, um, then we would have been able to rush, rush the guy. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the other thing that plays into it. You, you gotta, you gotta score early in the game and you gotta keep the game tight. Uh, so you can keep people off balance. So there's a lot that goes into that. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling, but all good. Thank you. We can't, we, we can't get sacked like that. Kevin, coach, only uh, two penalties for 20 yards yesterday. We talked about you know you guys dealing with the noise in Death Valley. How'd you think you handled the um, the atmosphere yesterday? I thought they handled it really well. Um, I thought they handled it a lot better than they did in Death Valley. And it got loud. The lower bowl did get loud because it kind of echoes in there. Um, and that's one of those things, man, these, these losses are hard. They're really hard. Trust me. Um, and you hope you learn from them and you don't make the same mistakes again. And that's an example of the guys getting better handling noise. Um, and I think our penalty numbers have went down. I think actually we're trending towards the um, upper tier, which, which is better. We'll wrap things up with Trevor. Uh, the answer might be no to this question. I don't actually know the answer, but do you guys look back at previous film from yourselves early in the year? Like, you know, we played great against Temple on D. We played great against Missouri on O. Do you guys look back and try to regain your identity in that way? I think you got to study yourself as much as you study your opponent. Um, and me being a defensive guy, I'll give you an example. Um, every week before I go to start game planning for the next opponent, I go back and watch our last couple of games to see what we do well, maybe what we need to get back to, what we didn't do so well. And then that would also allows me to do it. I play the game of what, you know, the Virginia Tech offensive coordinator is looking at, um, how he's going to attack us based on how we looked. And in doing so, you get a lot of good thoughts and ideas. And our offensive guys do the same thing. And so hopefully they see that. Um, but overall, I just we're gonna keep we're gonna keep working hard. We we got a great group of guys, and um, you know they're 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 confident. They believe. They're angry. They know we have to play better. They know we have to coach better. We all do. Um, I'm excited for Friday night. I'm excited to go out and practice. And um, we still have a lot of football left, and we need to get better. So 